Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. For me, it's just as early as for you, as Nigel said already. <laughs> um, many of the themes in Indonesia, and I tend to say rather Indonesia than Bali, because when I talked about going to Bali, everyone thought I go on holidays, but uh, there was definitely no holidays. Um, we're high, uh, many of these themes were high up on the policy agenda, ranging from the role of governments uh, explored by Nigel uh, just before to internet governance and of course the multi-stakeholder principles, but also human rights, cybercrime, spam and uh, a little bit of what happens to the IGF after 2015. Um, as you may know, next, uh, this year the IGF will be in Istanbul, and um, from what I know, the IGF in 2015 will be in, in Mexico, and what happens afterwards. Um, this is a little bit um, dependent on the outcome of Brazil, um, I think. But the dominating theme um, at the IGF in <coughs> Indonesia uh, was the government uh, surveillance which was addressed in, in, in different sessions and workshops. Participants uh, noted that the uh, IGF had matured and had been able to create a climate of trust when during all these discussions, um, especially uh, those discussions of, uh, of sensitive issues such as, such as uh, surveillance. But also um, uh, uh, discussions um, were about importance of developing uh, of developing local infrastructure, um, and I think as, uh, there was a, a, a focus uh, in this regard from uh, to internet exchange points that they are critical for development of local infrastructures, content, and applications. According to to internet exchange points, and <clears throat> they are mentioned quite often now uh, when, uh, when we talk about surveillance as well. Um, my association is running the world's largest peering point in Frankfurt in, in Germany called D6, and, uh, which is uh, an association not for profit, but the D6 has a 2.5 terabit per second, um, which is roughly, if I translate it, uh, a full disk of a medium-sized notebook every second transferred through the um, peering point by 300 um, internet service providers. And uh, so, so internet exchange points are critical not only uh, as infrastructure, as it was discussed, but also uh, they are critical in terms of as being a single point for, for tapping data lines and there was a, a discussion about um, <coughs> internet exchange points and, and NSA also in, in, in Germany uh, it was in the press that NSA has an office in the, in the D6 premises to, to tap lines which was uh, of course not true because that would be against the law um, by the way, well, yeah, um, no, but uh, it, it's different on, on what they can, uh, how, how they can step in in a, in a company or in an association or if they uh, break in buildings and do things. By the way, the, the, this peering point, and, and this is a, touches another uh, important point, uh, was net, originally developed in 95, uh, 1995 for some kind of transparent national routing. <clears throat> uh, at that time for cost reasons. On a European basis, national routing translates to Schengen routing, and this was also discussed and was also on the IGF agenda. Um, this is a, uh, a technical uh, thing which took place after the PRISM um, <clears throat> to have people or where people say our, our data uh, within a country should stay in, inside the country and not going to the uh, NSA's uh, date, data um, storages. Um, we have this discussion, and uh, this discussion came already up at the ITU um, <coughs> 
in 2012, Russia was talking about national uh, internet segments, and everyone said, no way, this doesn't work technically, and after PRISM, it came up from, from in, in many countries, they said, we want to have national routing so our data packets uh, uh, stay inside the country. Um, <clears throat> We'll see. I think technically it, it doesn't work except if you have an uh, internet exchange point and you can see uh, a lot of development of internet exchange points currently over the world. Um, uh, South America uh, does a, a, runs their uh, own sea cable which ends up in, in, in Africa, in Angola at the moment to avoid having data routed through the U.S. <coughs> And uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, my um, <clears throat> internet exchange, by uh, the the D D6, is uh, involved in, in 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 many of these <clears throat> actions, including running um, an internet exchange point in Dubai for the Arabian world. <clears throat> and and I think um, this is something going forward. If in in every country um, is an internet exchange point would be critical infrastructure, yes, but on, 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 on one side um, you can um, implement national routing much easier. This year's, uh, this brings me to, to an, uh, another point in, um, <clears throat> at the IGF, uh, this year's official theme was building bridges, uh, enhancing multi-stakeholder cooperation for growth and sustainable development. Um, but um, <clears throat> Uh, mass uh, uh, online surveillance and the uh, for, um, um, Nigel mentioned the Brazil meeting on internet governance and multi-stakeholderism dominated many of the discussions at the IGF <clears throat> so the Brazil meeting was very up and, and my personal uh, um, <clears throat> meaning to the Brazil meeting is a little bit black and white if uh, Brazil fails then the ITU will come in uh, <clears throat> into the game, will enter the game and, and will say, well, um, you had your chance, as Nigel said. Uh, but if Brazil um, <clears throat> will, be, uh, is, uh, will be a success, um, <clears throat> this will give a lot of new initiatives and, 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 and new energy to the multi-stakeholder process um, all over the world. <clears throat> This is my impression. Uh, getting back to the ITU, um, uh, Hamadan Touré, the current uh, chairman, um, um, is no longer eligible um, <coughs> at the plenipot, and the next one, the next candidate, um, is on, on what I heard, the current vice chairman, which is a Chinese. <coughs> Uh, uh, a Chinese guy, uh, but he is very quiet. So uh, <laughs> um, he, he never he never talked to people. He was just sitting there and and, and watching. And I attended many ITU meetings. Um, if I was not invited, uh, I was part of the German delegation just to enter and to see and uh, uh, what's going on at the ITU. Um, so the Chinese uh, guy was all, always sitting there, very quiet, and we'll see if he the next chairman. Um, I don't expect uh, that uh, um, the ITU will ramp off uh, uh, under his chairmanship very much, but um, this is personal um, <laughs> thing. This year, again, the um, IGF has, has proven, as Nigel said as well, that it was more relevant than ever. There was a lot of ministers and senior officials, and they reaffirmed their support to the forum. Um, and important stakeholders called for renewal of uh, the IGF mandate after 2015. There was also a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, many achievements uh, with uh, last year's IGF. For example, um, this was the first time that there was a main session on human rights, which proved um, highly relevant giving the prominence of human rights issues on, on the agenda of the IGF. Up to that IGF, 
um, rules were missing what users um, human rights are within the internet. This gap was closed at the IGF when the Human Rights Department of the Council of Europe advertised its uh, human rights guidelines for internet users and of course a first draft uh, were given in Indonesia to the other stakeholders for consultation a real multi-stakeholder process. Sometime, I think, until July this year, the guidelines will be published and and, and will be finished. And um, this can be seen a little bit as a a first important step to uh, rebuild trust for Internet communication uh, destroyed by the uh, prison affair. Internet governance issues are now in the mainstream of international policy concerns uh, and there is a growing realization uh, among ordinary individuals that the management of the the Internet concerns them. So um, that was one outcome uh, of of the IGF um, creeped into uh, many governments um, that there is more than just talking about regulation. Business uh, strongly believes uh, in the importance of the multi-stakeholder model, but also recognizes um, that it's not a perfect model and needs to be improved and, uh, I would say, (coughs) re-energized. This is especially true in the light of new initiatives, including uh, what was called the Montevideo Statement, (coughs) true about technical things and... and, uh, uh, and which leads to the uh, uh, would lead back the loop to the uh, Brazil meeting as well. Throughout uh, IGF uh, 2013, the multi-stakeholder uh, approach to internet governance was emphasized as the most effective way. Uh, to enable different stakeholders to play their respective roles in shaping internet-related policies. Um, For the European area, uh, what the IGF is on on the global level is the EURODIC, (coughs) the European Dialogue on Internet Governance, and uh, EURODIC is delivering its topics collected at their annual meeting to the IGF. The question is now, what happens if there is no more IGF? Um, But I think the EURODIC will... (coughs) will be uh, there even if there is no IGF uh, just for the European area. You will find information about Eurodic on on the table as far as I've seen. The overall aim of Eurodic is to provide an inclusive, open and transparent process to bring together uh, stakeholders to help shape pan-European perspectives and in particular of course to prepare for the IGF pass messages on, but not only preparing for the IGF, also um, (coughs) discussing um, the economic area of Europe (coughs) in uh, in the annual meeting. Internet for Society, how to serve the public interest, that was the overarching theme, uh, Eurodic 2013 in Lisbon. And the um, interesting, the proposal for this year overarching theme, and I love this uh, um, theme, multi-stakeholder dialogue, a broken model on next level democracy. Um, This is the... um, uh, it's still a proposal. It's, it's not fixed yet. Uh, maybe after January 31st when we have the meeting. But but uh, I, I love this uh, this uh, theme because it perfectly describes the the, the current situation we're in. <clears throat> and uh, by the way, uh, it will be in June in. Uh, in Berlin um, in the premises of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs <coughs> and of course under the patronage also uh, of the Ministry of Economy, uh, Economy. so uh, it's really multi-stakeholder dialogue and we're using as industry uh, the uh, <coughs> power and, and everything from, uh, from the government um, at All this, uh, of course, is uh, important when we consider that conversations at the annual 
IGF, uh, the global IGF, are also replicated in, in regionals, uh, regional IGFs like Eurodic, and of course it goes down to national IGFs. More and more countries uh, <clears throat> tend to have their national IGF to pass messages up to the European, uh, to the Eurodic uh, as European IGF, and then combine to, to the IGF to, uh, for discussion. Even with the focus on surveillance and at the IGF in uh, Indonesia, <clears throat> it proved again to be a useful opportunity, and I, I would miss it if we don't have it in after 2015, uh, because it's sometimes, as we do it today, face-to-face -face meetings and, discuss and discussions are always important. Thank you.